How do five sensory and six sensory people bond deeply? Hi, my name is Leah Chantel. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm explaining how five sensory and six sensory people can actually bond quite deeply if we understand each other. And so as the six sensory, if we want to increase our bond with our five sensory counterpart, we really have to understand them deeply and ourselves as well. We live in very different worlds, but we can connect. So as a sixth sensory, we often want to be seen, we want to be witnessed, we want to be supported and told we can achieve anything we set our mind to. We also want our insecurities validated and we want to be soothed and told that it's okay and that we're going to do well in spite of our negative feelings. And when we open up in this way to five sensory people, often we don't get the response that we're hoping for. Instead, we may get a very different response. And that's because five sensory people don't bond in this way. They bond in a, in a very different way through fear and exhilaration. Now, having said that, the fear is more on the negative side of connecting. And people who are connecting over fear-based information have more of a negative personality and a negative attitude. You have to discern how bad the fear is in a five sensory. And we all have it actually, six sensories have fear too. It's just that five sensories are living in fear a lot more often. They're consuming the news, they're watching violent media, they could be playing violent video games. And so they're constantly living in a state of fear and adrenaline and conquering the fear. And some of this can be healthy. For example, a professional athlete lives in this zone quite a lot. They have to conquer their fear that they're going to fail and then they have to achieve and succeed in spite of the odds when they're playing a professional sport, for example. So this fear adrenaline model isn't always bad. It can produce good healthy results, but you have to discern whether or not the five sensory is absorbing their fear and adrenaline in a way that's healthy for them or if they're absorbing it in a way that's unhealthy. So healthy ways of exploring this could be participating in sports or watching sports events. You could be going to a fair and enjoying a roller coaster ride, and that's a sense of fear and adrenaline. You could be traveling the world and experiencing things that are challenging in your travels. These things are all examples of fear and adrenaline, and this is the way the five sensory bonds deeply. If you're able to have these experiences with a five sensory as a six sensory and bond with your five sensory family members or partner over these kinds of fear and adrenaline experiences in a positive, healthy way, then that's how you build a relationship with them. That's how you build a very strong bond. It's not through conversation. It's not by asking them to support your dreams, goals, and ambitions. It's not by sharing what scares you that allows you to bond deeply with the five sensory. And in fact, if you share these types of emotions with them, you're more likely to annoy them. They may feel very impatient. They may have very limited capacity to understand or to listen when you have these sorts of concerns. Having said that, you can try a one-liner here or there once in a while to see if they're receptive. And they may have some skill and be able to have some conversation with you based on a line here or there. But I would be very careful and I wouldn't initiate that very often. Instead, let the five sensory share their world with you and you can meet them in it. You can go and participate in the activities. Maybe you can play the sport that they enjoy with them or you can go watch from the sidelines, or maybe there's something at work that's exhilarating them that they're really proud to be working on and you can support them in some way in their work and tell them that you're proud of them. These are the ways that five sensories connect with other people rather than the six sensory way of asking for support or witnessing on emotional situations. And so, where do we go with six sensories to get our emotional support and our witnessing? It's other six sensories. We need to find our soul family. We need to go to our groups of people who have the same experiences, who have a sense of intuition and senses of guides and angels around them. And when we connect with our soul family in that way, 
that's where we can really flourish and that's where we have the deep bonds in the way that we're hoping to have deep bonds. We can't go into a relationship with a five sensory expecting those needs to be met. It's just not realistic, but we can meet their needs and occasionally like a little bit of spice or a little bit of pepper, see how they respond to our needs in very, very small doses. Having said that, I wouldn't give them a very long essay or a very long conversation about things that you're insecure about or dreams that you're trying to make come true. You can tell them a little bit in anecdotes, but keep it as short as possible and make it more about them and the things that they're excited to experience. And you'll probably have a better time creating a deep bond with a five sensory person. Five sensory people are also really good at initiating conversations and being bold to ask for an opportunity to spend time with a sixth sensory. We can do this too as six sensories. We're no, we're good at initiating. We can initiate spending time with the five sensory. We can initiate a conversation. Having said that, they love the thrill and the joy of initiating and letting them do that gives them a lot of happiness. Whereas when we initiate first as a sixth sensory in conversation or in planning events, that takes some of their joy away from them. And so we wanna feed them as much joy as possible in their terms, because that will allow us to create a deeper bond. When we understand this, then we understand how we can form really deep relationships with our five sensory people. And as long as we know how to do that and we find ways of feeding our six sensory needs on the side somewhere else outside of our five sensory relationships, then we've got something very valuable there. We've got a really good relationship that we can build from and that's got a solid foundation.